is Julie Young with Korean American Story and Not Your Average. We are here again at my home away from home, Jongro in K-Town. I am sitting with uh, the angry Asian man, Phil Yu. Phil, it's good to see you. It's good to be here. I wanted to ask you about your involvement with film festivals. First of all, have you heard of Bad Rap? I have, I have. Shout out to Daiki and Salima. They are going to be premiering at a major film festival soon, which I'm not at liberty to tell you what okay. it is, but I'm really excited for them. Did you I'm see it? I'm looking forward to seeing it. Well, so I know you're really into film festivals, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. What's uh, your involvement with the well, I've always really loved um, independent film, and in, in college, uh, I was an intern for what is now known as the Center for Asian American Media. They run the um, what is now CamFest. Yeah. Right now, I'm on the board of Visual Communications, which is the presenting organization of the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival. You know, I try to go to Sundance as much as I can. I just went this year. I just love the fact that they allow for just a, a different kind of perspective from what you usually see at the multiplex. Like Asian American voices are those stories are allowed to be told. You know, I was uh, the executive producer of an action comedy called oh, Awesome right. Asian Bad Guys. Asian Bad Guys, yeah. yes. That was a lot of fun, mainly because it allowed me to work with people that I really like, and we were able to create something together, and if something should present itself like a really, another chance like that, I'm, I'm totally all about supporting and helping people get their stories across. You are in town because you got an award last night at the Asian American Legal Defense and, and Education Fund. Yes. How was that? It was cool. There are a lot of like luminaries there there and was honored alongside the likes of like Eric Holder and I was sitting right next to George Takei. I'm like, where am I? How did I get here? You know? <laughs> did you have to give a speech for that? I did, yeah. You received other awards before too. I've gotten a couple, yeah. Um, it just it seems like very overwhelming for someone who just kind of, you know, I, I do my work behind the laptop. and Someone who just started writing his thoughts just randomly thinking no one was ever going to read them, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. And 15 years ago, yeah. congratulations on yeah. that comeback. Hey. Get a comeback on that. Absolutely. Yeah. But seriously, like in the today, like in the internet, no one remembers what happened, you know, two days ago. So to be around for 15 years no, is pretty cool. I'm a dinosaur. I'm <laughs> eight, like 15 years on the internet is forever. But you you're know? still so relevant. Why do you think that is? Many of the things I talked about way back then still kind of relevant now. There's been a lot of great progress in terms of the Asian American community and like you see that in the media and in politics and stuff like that but a lot of stuff we deal with on a daily day-to-day -day basis like racism and all this like you know everyday prejudice and stuff like that after a while I was like oh I, you know I think we've covered that but then like something will rear its ugly head and I'm like damn it we're still right. dealing with this when I think of the word angry as an adoptee when people are called angry adoptees yeah. it's very offensive because really? it's usually used as a sort of like oh she's just angry or he's just angry like sort of sweep uh -huh. it aside don't pay yeah, attention uh -huh. to them because they're the angry ones uh -huh. or even like the stereotype of the angry black woman uh -huh. was there ever any thought on your part behind the usage of that word the idea of angry Asian anything it's kind of like not something that we're used to. Asians are seen as sort of weak and passive and, and not outspoken. And then so the idea of angry Asian was kind of facetious, like, oh, like, look at that angry Asian. But then I was like, why is that a joke? You know what I mean? I wanted it to be somewhat confrontational and provocative when people visited the site, because I was like, yeah, that is a concept that we should acquaint ourselves yeah. with, you know? I'm going to rewind a little bit. So you were actually born in Philadelphia. That's right, yeah. And I love the story that your parents named you Phil. Yeah. you were born in well, Philadelphia. Well, that's what I thought. And then, like, my mom read it, and she was like, that's not true. I was like, wait, I thought that's what you told me. I don't know, I'm not sure. It may or may not be true. It may or may not true. I'm like, I'll stick with it. I don't know. <laughs> it's a great story. It's a cool story, right? Yeah. Then while you were a baby, your family moved to California. Yeah, so I definitely consider myself a West Coast kid. I went to I went to Homestead High School in Cupertino. In Cupertino. Steve Jobs, Steve Watson, I went to my high school. It's a weird thing. I grew up in the heart of Silicon Valley where all that stuff is you know, happening now. It's booming and I had no idea. And then you went to right outside of Chicago for college. Uh, yeah, I was at, I went to Northwestern for, for college. Yeah. That's right outside of Chicago, right? It, it's a sub, yeah, suburb <laughs> north <laughs> north side. Yeah. Okay. And you majored in film there. Yep, radio, TV, film. And what did you originally want to do with that? Um, I wasn't sure. And like most people go into that major like because they want to make films. And I was like certainly that was an option. All I knew is that I really loved movies and television. My parents owned a video store for a while, and so I just was exposed to a lot of movies. Were your parents supportive of that? They were reluctant. <laughs> I give them credit for really sort of supporting my passions. Kind of on faith being like, you know, I think he knows what he's doing, and I know he won't be happy if, it's, if it's, he's doing something he doesn't want to do, you know. But I got to hand it to them for being you know, super supportive of, of what I wanted to do. So after that, you went to back to California. I ran history. back to California back. because the winters were too severe. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a degree, a master's in what? Critical, Critical studies, studies. At, at USC's School of Cinema Television, so what more, more film studies. <laughs> if you're in um, the film school, right, right, you can either do directing, you can either do screenwriting, 
You can do producing, or you can do critical studies. Critical studies is like, it's like being an English major for films. You write papers about movies. A lot of people do it on an academic track. They're usually going for the PhD. When did you quit like your day job? I did not quit. I got laid off. Oh, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was the kick in the butt I kind yeah. of needed, you know what I'm saying? If I was like, you know what, I don't want to do anything. I, I, I'm not going to update my resume. I think I'm going to just do Angry Asian Man. You said you don't speak Korean very well. Yeah, well, I would say I speak some Korean, but I can understand a lot. I had every opportunity to really yeah. to learn and to, you know, to become fluent, and I kind of regret that, actually. Yeah. You said, I am the last guy in the room to raise my hand, but technology has allowed people like me to have a voice. Is that still the case? I think in a lot of ways I've been thrust into a position of being, like, yeah. having to be more outspoken. I mean, honestly, like, yeah, the blog really allowed me to be, have a voice and say something. Right. In a situation where, I, yeah, I don't think I would have necessarily done so, but as the blog has grown more popular and... Because now you go around and you speak at colleges yeah, and yeah. and it's not, a big part of what you do, It's right? not something I anticipated or even set out to do, and people are looking to me for some kind of inspiration or advice, and I offer offer what I can give of my own story and my journey, but for a long time I was kind of like, I just want the message to speak for itself, and like, I don't want this to be about me, and then after a while I couldn't really avoid putting myself out there a little bit more, so yeah. I kind of just had to embrace it. 15 year anniversary, what's, what's your goal? I never anticipated getting to 15 years. <laughs> I kind of just want to do the same thing I've been doing, but do it better. Keep the blog going and make it a little more dynamic, and hopefully get more people to read it still and but also expand I mean I've expanded into other like YouTube and a podcast and stuff like that I would love to make that even better and grow that yeah, let's talk about your show angry Asian America um, yeah. It's on ISA TV. Yeah. How did that come about? You know, I've been friends with the guys who, who run ISA TV. They asked me, do you want to do it? And I was reluctant at first, actually, because I don't do a lot of on-camera stuff. Yeah. But they were like, you know, they pressed me a little bit more. And I was kind of like, you know what, let's give it a shot. And so I uh, worked with Dan Matthews. We started plucking um, topics from my blog and kind of tried to make it as natural as possible. And, and Jenny Yang is your... Jenny Yang, your, yeah. She's your regular co-host. Yeah, yeah. When I, when I put the show together, I was like, I really want there to be, I want to have a co-host, I want it to be a woman, and I want someone who's like funny and not going, because I'm not, you know what I mean? Your bucket list, what's been marked off of it and what's still yet to be accomplished? I want to travel the world, I want to see other places, you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to eat everything, yeah. you know? I want to see the Northern Lights, I want to like, yeah. you know, see the, the great structures of the world. I want to see the Asian American community grow and change and thrive, I want, you know, I want to see flourishing of like Asian American artists, you know, I want to have a hand in helping that happen, you know. If I see an Asian American actor or actress accept an Oscar, I want to be there and I see that, you know. Well, here's, this is one thing that I was checked off my bucket list I didn't know it was on my bucket list. I've been to the White House, I've met the president. That's pretty damn all because cool. All because of the blog, yeah. You know, you get like 15 seconds or 20, right. like 20 seconds to meet him and take a photo. And then after it's done, I'm like, did that just happen? I was like, the picture must be me going like, <laughs> But then the picture comes back and I'm like, oh, smiling and everything, it looked great, you know, I don't know. It's Tell me when you're happiest. I'm happiest when I'm with friends and family around a table and a great meal, good drinks. And it's like one of those dinners where like, it lasts like six hours long because you just don't want to leave the table. It feels good, you know, it's like safe and it's home and it's like, it's fun. Tell me something about Phil Yu that we don't know. Kind of afraid of dogs. <laughs> yeah. Like, even when I see dogs now, I tense up a little bit, just, like, the smallest, the smallest dog, I'll be like, like, a little bit. It's, I don't know what it is, man, yeah. So no pets for you at home. <laughs> no dogs. All right, that's a good one. Yeah. All right, then I'm going to say thank you, Phil, for sitting down with us. Thank you. I'm Appreciate it. Come back.